<laughs> Hello, everybody around the world. Um, I live in Florida, and a big hurricane is coming my way. It's going to hit about maybe about 100 miles south of here and then move up north by me since I live close to Jacksonville. Maybe you can, I'll mention Jacksonville because many of you can see that easy in the back. This is the biggest city in Florida. Anyway, uh, when those big bad things come along and act off the electricity, and I really couldn't get bored to death. No TV, no internet. All I got is this little thing. I guess it's free from Hey Baby. It's not the very best radio in the world, but it works. And it's all I'm going to have until those hardworking uh, electricians get my electricity back on after that badass storm comes through. What a thing. This is like, like going back 200 years. <laughs> Also, I'm hoping to go visit my daughter up north by Chicago. Uh, I think it's town Lyle. And I'd be looking to see all you guys up at the karaoke places around her condominium. I really enjoyed it last time with your appreciation. No, the way you appreciated me coming down to see you. And some of the DJs already knew who I was. And the crowd crowd gave me a, a nice applause. Sometimes I go out with my daughter uh, and sometimes with her husband. They, I mean, they had turns going out and not trying to split them up or any, anything like that. Uh, but uh, I was hoping to go up there near the end of September while the weather is still nice around Chicago. I don't forget I lived there around 70 years. I know when the weather is good and when it's not. But um, I was going to go up there, and uh, these days uh, um, I'm finding out I need to use my oxygen tank more often. And you certainly can't carry that on a plane. So now you gave me these blue things, uh, blue and so green. No, green and silver things. They're spare oxygen tanks. And the good thing about them is you can run them when your electricity is out. So maybe I'll survive another pneumonia bout or just, just getting too old to breed without those machines anymore when I do need them. It's a terrible experience. Once again, I'm going to warn the whole world that there were some bad people back in, on TV in the 50s telling you to go out and buy a pack of cigarettes. And the movie stars in help you, your, your favorite actor or actress on the screen, letting them puff him one up. And my big brother, five years older than me, Tell me, have a cigarette. And I was only 12 years old. Oh, what a family. <laughs> uh, and guess what? That brother of mine, five years older, guess what? Did he go to the hospital eight or nine times like me for pneumonia? No. He didn't go. How come he's so much healthier than me? Is it because he didn't have to work at a machine shop for 50 years, bring that dirty air? Who knows? Who's, who's the one to blame? Me for listening to him in the first place? How come he didn't get pneumonia? He's five years older than me. Yeah, although he's never, can't say he's never been in a hospital. 
I, uh, a few years back, I remember he crashed his motorcycle. <laughs> that was really bad. Unless you when he did some damage to his eyes and had to work on his eye. I heard that was very painful. Anyway, I'm glad something like that never happened to me. Yeah, I've been in a few minor car accidents. Never hurt anybody on the road. None of my passengers got hurt. But um, anyway, uh, it's a strange thing. So maybe we can't blame it all on the cigarette company. Maybe what kind of job you do in your life. I made all those nice, pretty parts for you people for 50 years in the machine shop. Somebody's got to make them. Somebody has to do that job. It pays good, and it should. Look at all the suffering I have to go through. Anyway, uh, so I asked the guy to come over and train me on how to use that stupid uh, oxygen tank that doesn't need to be plugged in. I mean, the oxygen's already in those tanks. I told him I gotta go to, uh, and then he should explain to me how to use it again. Cause those things are kind of complicated. And you know how to mess around with something that you don't completely remember how to turn it on. So I thought it'd be a good idea to know. And you know, a hurricane coming through, you're knocking out the electricity for 12 or 24 hours. God, I hope it ain't longer. I hope that don't mess things up for, for me for good. And I won't be able to broadcast this anymore. Because I won't be around here to broadcast for you. Maybe my wife can sing. And <laughs> she's a good singer. She just sings that old stuff that uh, most people don't like. Uh, you have to either listen to the right people when you're answering requests, and then after you hear the song, which I try to tell you how to make it easier for me, especially since I got 130 some thousand new subscribers since July 31st of this year, where you, it's, um, it's that's almost one month. Yeah, I think it is. It's August 30th. It's one month ago. And not one of you listened to me. You just turned me on to music and your brains were back somewhere else. None of you listened to me about how to make it easier for me to find out what song you want me to request. And once again, I can't even find out who requested that song. But thank you very much. And you really made me famous. You added a bunch of subscribers to me, like PewDiePie did to me a couple of years back. I really appreciate that. Please write me a comment and let me know in the public know who requested that song that so many people were so crazy about. To me, it's an old song. It's a song that I made when I was singing an uh, Usher song. Um, one was back in the early 2000s. The DJs got us falling in love again. Uh, I think it was Usher and uh, Pitbull and did the rap, rapping part in the middle of the song. Anyway, thank you very much. That was the best request I ever had. Those ones that PewDiePie had, uh, those were requests. Those were my favorite songs from the past. When he discovered me, I think he really liked me uh, singing at my daughter's house that I'm going up to. Uh, she didn't have a very good recording equipment. Matter of fact, uh, I did it in my sync snap over there. It works any place. If anybody's got a computer in the house, I can use the computer and get on the air. That's one thing good about it. Um, they had just the plain computer and find sign up with SingSnap, and it's not cheap, people. It's a very expensive. You guys think singing is free, and it, it costs a lot of money to buy all the equipment. I'm just I'm recording to you right now on my wife's old uh, Sony camera, which she sold to me for a reduced price. I really could use a new one. Now she wants me to buy her a new computer because she has to work away from the house and uh, she has to drive around 
60 miles to get to her job since this city is mad at her for not being able to come back to work when she says she was going to come back. She called him up three days after I got out of the hospital. She was dead tired from take, uh, visiting me every day and also moving into this apartment here. We own a house. So she, we can uh, be closer to work. She says, oh, those good schools are down here, which is about 15 miles away from my house up north. So I said, okay, because uh, in the past, I had a company closed on me in 1995. That's a long time ago. Some of you guys, people, my fans weren't even born yet, but, um, my job at 24 years comes to a dead end when the company decides to move down south. Their family, uh, the owner of my company, which you probably know it well, uh, it's called Amco Tools. It's not Amco Transmission. It's Amco Tools. T O O L S. Anyway, I had a job there for 24 years. Until the owner of my company, uh, their mother died, her brother and sister. He's rich. He owned one other company too, uh, close to my other one that he had. But uh, that was his private group. The other two had something to do with their mother, his brother and sister. And they made him sell that company so they can get their money out and put it in their bank account. That's the way things work in this world. A private company is a hundred times better than a stock owned company. Where you're just another number on a piece of paper. Um, ever since then, that day back in uh, 87 actually, I lost my job there in 95 that time because they moved to another state down in Tennessee. <laughs> oh well, my God, be guy bones. Anyway, um, and that company took over that day back in '87. I forgot what month of the year it was. It wasn't too good for all the salesmen. They fired every one of them. Uh, it wasn't too good for the office people. They fired every one of them. And then they fired all the bosses. And they came in and brought their own people. And us, at least we are in the union, they wanted us to take a real big pay cut. The union got them to cut it down to a dollar pay cut. But uh, I, that's when I learned that uh, public owned country companies are just in there and over, are no good. It's both better to work for a private machine shop. Anyway, uh, I took the cut and paid in, and back uh, seven years later, the amounts that are sick and tired of cold weather in Chicago, around Chicago, I say Chicago, because most of you wouldn't know the little town that factory was in. So I didn't say Chicago to make it easier for you to understand where I spent all my whole life, close to Chicago, not in it, but around it. And uh, I lost my job that day. I had to go sign up for unemployment. And uh, let me tell you people, unemployment is good, but it's not enough to pay your bills. <laughs> we uh, charge so much money on our credit card, I had to get a, a loan from my uh, mortgagers, from the people who own my house, to uh, pay the bills, and pay off that big credit card charge. Anyway, uh, most of you know what I'm talking about, the older people. You know, something bad happened to your life, too. I'm not saying nobody suffered a loss like I did, because I know better. A lot of people get laid off or they lose a job because they're 
the country moved down south or something. And uh, being south, I mean, uh, talking about four, six, 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 maybe 600 miles away in Tennessee, that's a long ways to go. <laughs> so, um, no, it wasn't fun having to trade in your newer car for a little piece of junk with a leaky sunroof. First day I drove out of the car after it was raining at work, I got a, a cold rain shower. <laughs> right from the first turn to the first corner, all that water leaked from the sunroof right on top of my head. It's like I was standing in a shower. What a shock. It's only some of the minor things you have to put up with. And you take a four or five dollar an hour pay cut and go somewhere else to work. What a shame. Actually, the place I finally got a good job at, the best company I ever worked at, um, was pretty close to the same uh, location from my, where I live. So I, uh, we really appreciated that too. That all you people that have to drive a half an hour, an hour or two further to get to work. Uh, it's really nice to have a company you know, like six months from your house. And of course, even though we don't live in Chicago, we still live in a town where a lot of town people have to get up and go to work just like me. And it took half an hour to get to work in the morning. So I just switched to the second shift. And everything was fine. It only took 10 minutes to get, get to work. And 10 minutes back home again. And don't you dare speak, because you'd be like a living uh, sucker for the police. Because you're the only one on the road. Makes it easy to drive back and forth to work. And like, you stand out like a target for the police department. Don't you dare do one mile over the speed limit. I already knew that. You know. so at least I got, never got a ticket driving back and forth to work. Anyway, my price. Wife of today, she wanted to get closer to work, so I understood it and moved us to these other apartments. I have uh, epizema, COPD, whatever those four letters stand for. I'm sure some of you know, there are plus people who study medicine. Um, but um, it's not so easy to live in an apartment, even with elevator. What am I going to do when the electricity cuts off? I'll be stuck here, not only with no electricity. How am I going to get downstairs to go out to a karaoke place? Of course, they'll be closed too anyway. They probably ran out of electricity too. Oh well. Anyway, I must rather live in my own house with having epizema. That's the thing that makes you go to the hospital with pneumonia. All these fancy words these doctors got for the nine years of going to school and when you become a doctor. <laughs> a machine shop, we take about nine or ten years because before you can become a real good machinist now. Probably even longer now. Today's machine shops are drastically different. You're not working on a, a machine they paid a few thousand dollars for, you're working on a million dollar machine. The machines today do three operations, not just one plain old ordinary operation. It's more than a, a late operation. It's, it's, uh, the machine does two late operations. It's got a robot running it, and it's got a, a, a machining center operation on it. That's where you do all your name off sides of the center line of a piece. You have to have a machining center to do that. I never liked the chain saying, is this too much to bury? Your hand to be all worn out by the time you got home. All the things, the machine saying, uh, machines all over the whole fit part. And you have to use a file, a deburrer or something to get all the sharp edges off. It's a lot of nothing but deburring of that machine running. So I won't go through all the details, but um, it's not even worth becoming uh, a machine nowadays. You have to know so much. You have to know uh, 
it says a seven or eight twos that go on the machine for the one particular job. They want you to put, there's these machines called 300 twos. So oh, they're all set to go. When you want to change it over, you get another job in there. So these the machines with advanced computers on it, doing all these dimensions at one time before you even take it back out of the machine. And guess what? You don't even have to take it out of the machine. The machines today run around the clock. They don't want them to stop. No cigarette breaks, which is good bad for you anyway. Uh, no stop machine and talk to somebody break or run down the clock machine, get a cup of coffee. Machine just stops, stays idle until you get back there. And the boss is watching every second you spend away from that machine. And it doesn't have any schedule breaks either. So the people can stop over, go to the washroom, get a cup of coffee, get a donut or something. No. They want to have a machine running around the clock. clock. And when you want to go home on the weekend and spend some time with the family? No. They want that machine running. They want it running around the clock 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And who's going to run that machine? A robot. You got to learn robotics. Those robotics not only have to learn how to put that part in the machine, and some are casting. They have to be put in the machine very carefully. Otherwise, the part is all screwed up. It's a lot of science today, people. A lot of artificial intelligence. And you poor people that just drive a truck for a living. You people, poor people that work at McDonald's for a living, or Wendy's, or Burger King. You name it. Five, five guys in a burger. Whatever. Well, that place is expensive. Some food's real good, though. And you want a specialized hamburger, that's the place to go. But you better bring extra money in your wallet. They are expensive. Anyway, um, all you poor people that have these minority jobs, and believe me, a robot can do pretty smart. It can become as smart as you or smarter. And you have to teach those robots how to run your machine when you're at home resting for a nice uh, after a uh, hard day shift at the work. Some of the jobs the machine says are not very nice. Some are, we can cut your hands on it. Uh, it's dangerous. It's a, uh, it's not a very good way to make a living. Plus, you're, you're probably breathing that dirty air that those doctors are telling you, but don't smoke cigarettes. Nobody ever asked me about the dirty air you breathe. They didn't have machine scrubbers that discovered the, the something that cleans the air a little bit while you're, while you're standing next to the machine. At least those, machine, those robots won't get that. Uh, uh, cancer for your lungs, or give you epizema, COPD, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, those robots, uh, you have to be smart enough to program them. And they not only take the machine in a machine, they put it in a precise position inside the machine, like a casting, otherwise, the part will be scrapped before you even start cutting it. But you get the picture right there. Um, everything has to work that way nowadays. So these company owners can make more money. Or this stay in business. But you gotta keep up with the rest of the world in machine shop. Everybody wants a low price and a good quality. Everybody. You buy a certain car, it can be made by a machine. Engineers got to tell the machines what to do, what to make, how to what, what's the specification. 
your dimension, your tolerances of all that stuff. So you could make a good car for you to drive down the road. It's all star third, people. What a machine is. You wouldn't be anywhere around. You're back 200 years ago. With when there was nothing. You watch your old movies? Cowboy movies, maybe. <laughs> There's nothing to them. It's like us today, when the current canes come along and knock off electricity for 12, 24 hours. Some people gotta wait days to get the electricity back on. Anyway, what am I gonna do when I run out of oxygen? I need some oxygen for my body. Call the hospital up. Are they going to have an ambulance service running then? They're going to help me down the four flights of stairs. No, no elevators. Electricity's not working. Remember, they run on electricity too. Yeah. So if the emergency place doesn't come over and pick me up and take me off, so I can use my oxygen machine, um, I'm out of luck. I won't be around here anymore to talk to you or sing songs for you, which I enjoy more. My wife is a good talker. You can watch some of her channel. Well, PewDiePie is a good talker, too. And so is Johnny Carson. We had him on TV for 20-some years in here in the United States. Very good talker. He was the most famous person on TV. He's dead now. I bet he made a big buck. I even like Johnny Carson and some of the night shows. It's when you go old, you have to go to work, raise a family. You enjoy that little night show late at night. Yep. Especially the ones that are harder to get to sleep. <laughs> now what was I going to tell you? Oh, it was back to the oxygen. I was told by the man that taught me how to use a super uh, tank machine, the one you don't even need electricity. It just got the oxygen already in. He showed me how to, and all that. I, I said, oh, I watched some uh, stations on YouTube that show me how to get that oxygen machine hooked up again. I don't want to really need it unless there's no electricity. That's all we're good for. Because they're certainly not good to take out an airplane flight. And the guy had to get told, you can't take this thing out of an airplane. Don't kick you off. You'll never let you on board. I said, what? You don't worry about something that you don't need. You guys ain't worried about people like me. Well, that guy's got two little plastic things in his nose. Wonder what's wrong with him. You don't worry about people like me. I don't worry about people like you either. Who even cares? But, uh, to go on an uh, machine that you're going to be needing now as you're older. It's a little bit harder to you get around life. I have to take some, something with me to go to my daughter's house. And she don't have any oxygen machines there. And maybe people, these people take a long time to delivering the stuff when you want to order them up on a phone. Even when they do, it's important. I might not get a, a machine to strap on the back of my back that could be plugged into a place where they have electricity and recharge it. Of course, where I'm going, in Chicago, they don't have her. Not to say that it's a perfect place to live either. Believe me, I know the weather in Chicago because I live around every 70 years. Also, when I visit my son, I don't have to worry about hurricanes. He lives inland from the ocean. Uh, over in, uh, oh, God. San Antonio? Yeah, that big uh, I was be able to forget the name of this big city there in Texas. Texas. But he's, he lives 100 miles in the, from the Gulf of Mexico, so they don't worry about hurricanes. Um, Chicago, there's a good time of the year to go there, and there's a bad time. One of the good times is September, May is a good, also June is a good month to visit Chicago. 
The rest of the time, it's not so nice there, people. In wintertime, it's a challenge to drive a car. You go too fast on a curb, you can run off to the side of the road and hit the curb, and you're in for an expensive wheel alignment program. Or some other thing that broke when your car ran into that curb, just for going a little bit faster than you're supposed to. There's other things besides that. Uh, there's a wide, wide out. Last for 20, 30 seconds going down the highway. The blizzard is blowing 90 degree angle to your, to your direction. It's blowing across, bringing tons of snow, or creating a blind spot while you're driving at 50, 60 miles an hour. With the snow so thick, you can't see beyond your headlights. And there's other things around Charlotte, it's really open Wisconsin, it's foggy roads. We can't see no more in the way you should be going 25, 30 miles an hour. If you're going faster, you're not going to see what you're going to be running into. In the back of somebody's truck or somebody's car. And yet there's people who are driving 75, 80 miles an hour because they don't have the time to be driving 25, 30, 35 miles an hour when it's foggy outside. They just don't have the time. They don't have plenty of time in their grave or in the hospital recuperating from hitting somebody in the back end. We can have plenty of time then. But you should be glad if you don't have to put up with the BS of getting around with a car when there's inclement weather. You just stay home. <laughs> You're laughing at all. Let's have to go to work. <laughs> Oh well, I think you get to what I'm saying. And you people in California and uh, um, where my son lives in Texas, you don't have to earn dollars. You don't have to worry about such things. Most of the time, you got pretty good driving weather, and you do uh, 70 miles an hour, 75 down the highway. That's cool. Oh well. Um, anyway, if I they don't get that machine to me. All over my house, supposed to strap on your back. I won't be able to go to my daughter's house. My wife, I'm planning doing some things uh, in October. I won't be able to go in. Now, October comes up, it's going to start getting kind of chilly there around in Chicago. I know, I lived there 70 years. And living in this apartment with something else. What if I want to get out of the house and drive somewhere? With no electricity. Well, I'm depending on the electric rain elevator. For me to go down four or five six stairs and go back up again? You're crazy. I don't feel like going anywhere. Especially coming over for a night out of town. I have to climb four stairs, four stairwells, up to get to my apartment. I'm not young, like those people you see on TV. Those four people uh, that live in that apartment up there with a broken elevator. You know which show I'm talking about. The one with the, though it's been taken off the air now, the Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory, that's what it is. Where their apartment is broken. Their elevator is broken for, the, what, seven or eight, nine years they were on a TV show. Sure, they're young. When I was young, when I was five years old, no, not, I was seven, eight years old. I want a trip to Washington, D.C. for free with my newspaper. The, uh, a job. <laughs> I went to the Washington Monument, you know what that is. That's that big, tall, skinny building that goes up 550 feet in the air in Washington, D.C. I climbed all the way up there when I was young. I wish I never started smoking cigarettes or working in a machine shop. It's 
terrible living in my condition. It's either this or six feet under people. Think about what you're doing to your health. Every time, if you're smoking cigarettes, you can, uh, a lot of people don't even have to smoke. There's be around a smoker and they wind up dead in the hospital. I was lucky. All my friends are already dead. They're already six feet under. <laughs> Just think every time you light up the cigarette, what's it gonna be like when you smoke as long as me? You're gonna have a miserable time if you don't have to worry about going to work anymore. You get Social Security and pensions and whatever money you manage to save up, if any at all. Or maybe you'll be so poor when you retire, you'll want to be dead. <laughs> you guys got a lot to go. Uh, all I can tell you, if you want to ditch, dig deep ditches, or drive a garbage truck when you, reach, when you get old enough to go to work, so be it. We need people to dig holes and do some uh, landscaping and all that junk, or help build a highway system. We need people like you. Don't worry about studying or get to know anything. <laughs> You'll find out. Just when you get out of high school, mom and dad tell you, you get the fuck to work or don't bother living here anymore. Like I should have told my own kids. They live off me for free. I didn't want their money. But it makes it hard for them later on when you get older and it's hard to send a, a check in the mail or a bank transfer. Now, they got all that easy stuff so that your kids run out of money. All you can do is bring old dad up and ask him to borrow some money. He won't some money to you. <laughs> you guys do what you want in school. Well, the, way, the world needs dummies to go to work. Don't appreciate you. Maybe you think you can become a truck driver. By the time you get old enough to get a, out of 10, 20 years down the road, we might have all automated trucks on the highway. What are you guys going to do then for a living? Go to work at McDonald's, you say? <laughs> They're going to have robots selling your food. They got some of these places already around here, you know, saying, uh, you got to order a uh, your phone from a machine. <laughs> oh, you probably get a job this week before. I don't think they got the robots good enough to do that yet. But you're not going to have very many places to work with AI coming on in the future. AI, we say, what the hell are you talking about? It's artificial. Intelligence, A-I. So, um, what if the, uh, Korea wants to start bombing people with their newly developed uh, submarine bomb, uh, missiles, like we got, and the Russians I had for many years, and sent a missile of out but underneath the ocean to strike your country, which you can be as close as 20 or 30 miles away. What are you going to do then? What are you going to do with Iran? Get to a bomb. Another country. How many countries already have bomb? The H bomb and delivery package besides the United States, Europe, and Russia, and Pakistan, China. It's getting worse, people. Enjoy your life while you can. I hope my music cheers you up every morning because let's make it good what time we got left. But maybe that's why aliens never come and visit us. Some people think, oh, the guy's crazy now. He's talking about aliens. Maybe they destroy themselves before they can take a rock uh, or find saucer and come over here. Did you ever figure that out, people? <laughs> did you watch all the science fiction movies I did, like Star Trek and all that stuff? Come to reality, people. Enjoy your life now. 
and turn your heart over to God. Start going back to church. You might need it to stay out of hell. And by singing, I am sure I love to sing for you people. And I got the best fans in the world. I enjoy spending a, a half an hour or so reading comments every day. Some the people, they like me to smile. It just cheers them up. That feels good for me when somebody, a useless person like me, who can't do nothing anymore, because he smoked cigarettes his whole life and worked in a machine shop. Now he can barely breathe. He's not good for anything. <laughs> I sure hope I can cheer you up. You got it worse than I did. I was born two years before we used that atomic bomb because those stupid, um, well, I'm not going to say stupid, the people that dislike you and me, their leaders didn't want to stop the war. They're going to make us keep fighting the war and using all the uh, military just dying for you people every day to keep people like me from being attacked by the Japanese. It was, now that I'm older and think about it, it was a good decision by President Truman to drop that uh, atomic bomb. And he had to do it twice, people. How stupid those leaders were, thinking they could beat the United States. Wanting to keep that war going on and on and on killing very all our young men in this country. I watch shows like that on TV or movies. There's free movies to watch. Documentaries. Just appreciate uh, all the people that are willing to die for you in the military. And uh, that's what I hate about football now, those people who didn't stand up when their national anthem was playing. If it wasn't for the military people, we wouldn't be around to watch those football games. Well, I want to let your people go, you know, it says long enough. And uh, just think about poor Johnny D sitting at home uh, in his apartment with no electricity. If he goes out, he has to worry about climbing the four flights of stairs. He might not make it back up again. He might have to spend the night sleeping in the hallway until he's got enough energy to walk up those four flights of stairs and get into his apartment because the hurricane knocked out the electricity. So be glad you live in a city that is not as cold as Chicago in the winter time and uh, a city that's far enough away from those oceans as far as keeping getting hit by uh, a hurricane. Or in California, you might get, tomorrow morning you might have an earthquake. I'm not saying that uh, Texas is that's the best state to live in. There's other bad places to live in, too. There's lots of states that get cold, like Chicago was in the wintertime. Uh, most people who live in, across the, the south of the United States by the ocean, to the Gulf of Mexico, uh, they're in danger of hurricanes just like we are. It would be a lot more than uh, having electricity out and then we put out like the people did 200 years ago, but they didn't have any electricity. And get bored to death like me, they have lots of floods down there by the Gulf of Mexico. There's uh, a lot of bad places to live. And uh, most of the time, you get to do just like me. Uh, you live where there is a job. Okay, you will not be a happy person paying three or four times the cost of real estate for your home or apartment over in San Diego. I always changed about living there until I found out 
like an old townhouse like I was living in, a townhouse, that's where uh, you really don't, it's just like a park and you're renting, uh, buying a section with it instead of renting it. <laughs> and, and find out uh, if your house is worth $100,000 that you're living in, and it's 400000 in San Diego or San Francisco or some of the other rich towns in California. You have to filthy rich to afford to live there or willing to work eight hours a day in a rare job and work uh, part-time for another job just to pay your rent or the mortgage payment. <laughs> Is that living? Is that? <laughs> no, not, not for me. My wife's relative somehow rich, rich enough to live in San Diego. But they're never home. <laughs> they're out 12 hours a day working paying for that BS. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I kept enough of your time, people. Have a good one, and um, I hope I survive the next hurricane. Um, and with no sense to stay home, says I'll probably never be able to make it back up here again on foot. <laughs> oh well, at least I'm still alive today. The rest of my friends are dead. Goodbye, people.